man, you know, if I do this again, if I, if I risk it this way or whatever it is, we think that we're going to mess it up again because we're unsure about the direction. Is this the right direction that God wants for me? Well, there's a way to know what God's direction is in your life. And it comes from the verses uh, that we've been looking at in this uh, chapter, chapter 3 of the book here, Romans 12, 1 and 2. So you can find that verse, <clears throat> Romans 12, 1 and 2, and in fact it's in, in your resource guide, it's going to be on page 49 at the very beginning there. It says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, that's a good verse right there. That ye may prove, now I like that, the very end there, this is the direction. Remember the, the title of this chapter is Three Dedications for Discerning God's Direction. Okay, how do we get to the direction? Well, it's the dedications that we've talked about in the, in, uh, earlier in this chapter. And it all comes from this verse. And so the, the goal is that you may prove or test or discern what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Boy, to have the confidence to live your life and say, I know I am perfectly in the center of God's goodwill for my life. Wouldn't that be great? It's possible. It's possible. You don't have to be hedging all the time. Oh, man, I wonder. I just don't know. You, you can have that confidence in your life so that you can, you can prove, you can discern that you are in the perfect will of God. And when we say perfect, don't, we, we don't mean that you have achieved perfection, that you're without fault, without sin. But that, uh, that word really means maturity, uh, so that you, you have come to the place where you can see the complete, that, that end goal for God's will, God's plan for you. So that if you know what that end goal is, then you can be confident in the steps that you're taking now that they are indeed the will of God for your life. And, and that's, that's something that seems very foreign to us. Uh, I, <clears throat> this is something that God has shown me uh, through his word and in my own experiences. Um, but even when I was in college, the Lord was showing me and, and convinced me of something from his word that if I am yielding to God, then he will not let me take a wrong step. Now, that doesn't mean that God's twisting my arm and forcing me to do something, but that means that I am willingly yielding to God and his direction in my life so that when things happen in my life, and I think, oh man, this is, this is bad. Well, God's allowed it, and I'm following after him. I know that I that I took the right step because I was taking that step by yielding to him. So it's the right step. It's not a wrong step. It's the right step. No matter what, what other things may come into my life and how it may feel bad at the moment, it might feel like, oh, I made a big mistake. You've seen this in your own life too. How you've done something, you've made a decision, you've chosen to go a direction, and there was a time of doubt where you thought to yourself, oh man, maybe this was not right. But then, later on in your life, you look back on that and you say, wow, okay, God knew what was going on here because uh, he, he directed it and I can see it from this perspective now that I couldn't see before. <clears throat> it's very interesting how God puts things in our lives and if we are pursuing a relationship with him, through the three dedications that we discussed, and I'll review those again, then we can have that confidence that the steps that I am taking are indeed in his will. And, uh, and I want you to have that confidence. So thinking about this discerning God's direction, 
uh, for our lives. Letter A is this. You will know God's direction for you if these three areas are dedicated to him. What what are these three areas? Uh, First of all, I I want you to notice that big word, (laughs) I-F. Okay? That's an important word. If we are not dedicated to him, then we cannot be confident in the direction that God wants for us. But if you are dedicated to him, then you can be very confident in the direction that he has for you. And you will, in fact, know his will, that specific will for your life. It's not just a game of chance. We're not just rolling dice trying to figure out what God wants us to do. But in fact, God leads us by his spirit, through his word, and we can know what he wants for us to do. So you can know God's direction according to that verse that we just read. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Those three things, your your presentation, your transformation, and your confirmation. And I don't mean confirmation as in uh, you're confirmed into the Catholic Church or something like that. It's not that. But, but conforming, your conformation, how you conform to God's will. So those three dedications, that's what we've been talking about in this chapter from these verses here. And we'll kind of break those down a little bit. The first one, the presentation. Remember, present your bodies a living sacrifice. And in fact, if you look back in your book there, Um, You'll see point number one, dedicate our bodies to God. This is your presentation. Remember, you make yourself like a present and you give yourself to God. God, my body is, is a gift to you. This body is for you. And so you present yourself, your body, and everything in your life with it. You present yourself to God. Dedicate your body to God. There ought to be a time in your life when you have made a decision to officially dedicate your life to God. I remember when I dedicated my life to the Lord. I was a junior in high school, and it was during a camp uh, week. I had gone to summer camp with some other teenagers. I remember sitting around the fire There were decisions that were being made. I had heard the preaching of God's word, and I made a decision right there that whatever God wanted me to do, I was going to do it, whatever he wanted. And I remember making that decision, and uh, and I stuck with that decision. There were were times in my life when I thought, I think I want to do this, I want to do that. But I made that decision officially to present myself, my body, my life to God for whatever he wanted me to do. Later on, he showed me specifically what he wanted me to do. But it didn't come until first I made the presentation of myself to him. Does that make sense? You've got to present yourself to the Lord. So number one, you dedicate your body by presenting yourself, your presentation. Number two, the transformation. And I'm kind of reviewing here a little bit. Uh, This was point number two, I think, in your notes um, on page 50. Dedicate our minds to God. How does that happen? Well, through the transforming. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you dedicate your mind to God, in essence, you're saying, okay, I've already presented my body to God. Now I'm allowing God through the the, uh, transformation of my mind, the renewing of my mind, to transform me from the inside. So God changes you on the inside, and that's a battle of the mind when you choose to have the mind of Christ. You choose to allow him to do his thinking for you, okay? And so you dedicate your mind to the Lord. You allow your mind to be renewed. And then finally, the 
the conformation, that is, you allow God to set the standards for your life. You allow God to tell you, this is how I want you to live, this is how I want you to act, this is how I want you to talk, this is how I want you to dress, this is how I want you, you know, all of those things. And you allow, instead of saying, well, what is my favorite musician dress like, if you can call them musicians, or what is my favorite, you know, athlete drink, okay, no, no, what does God want me to do? And I will let God structure the boundaries in my life. And so I will be poured into the mold that God has for me. That was point number three. So we have the presentation, the transformation, and the conformation. Um, once we dedicate ourselves in these three areas, then we can know the will of God for our lives. But you've got you've to dedicate yourself first that way. Knowing God's will is all about decisions, and, and following God's will is all about making decisions. Because, uh, and, and this is not in your notes, this is an extra tidbit uh, just for you. Uh, so this is free of charge. So decisions, all right? We're making decisions all the time in our lives. Right now, uh, my daughter is learning to drive, and, uh, and hopefully in a couple weeks she's going to have her driver's license, and uh, that's kind of an exciting step for her. So she just turned 17 this week, and, uh, and so she's ready to go. Um, but when we're, when we're driving, you know, she's driving and I'm in the passenger seat. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the biggest things, uh, uh, the biggest areas of stress for her, and I remember when I was learning to drive, it was the same, was the red lights. It's going to turn yellow. What if it turns yellow? What do I do? What do, what do oh, it's still green. Oh, it, <laughs> and all this stress, you know, and you're thinking, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and, you, and you're wondering, do I speed up? Do I slow down? And, and I mean, those of us that have driven for a long time, it's kind of no big deal. Oh, I can make that. You know, <laughs> and you hit the gas and you go, right? But, but when you're first learning, it's really stressful. And so as, as she's learning to drive, one of the things I tell her when, when, uh, when, when we're coming up to that red light and, uh, and finally she makes a decision, slams on the brakes and we all go, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I say, good job. You made a decision and you stuck with a decision because how do you get in accidents when you can't make a decision? And, and you're like, oh, maybe I should go. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe, you know, and you're, and you're out in the middle of the intersection because you couldn't make a decision and then boom. So she made a decision. That's good. When you're driving, you've got to make decisions. You can't just let everybody else tell you, tell you what to do, you know. And I know some people that are backseat drivers, they love to tell you what to do all the time. But ultimately, it is the driver that has to make the decisions. Look, when you're following God's will, it is making decisions all the time. What does God want for me right now? Right now, what does God want for me? And I, I, even sitting here, now, I mean, God, you know God wants you to be engaged and following along and, and paying attention and, and letting his Holy Spirit talk to you through the, through the words of Scripture. But there's other decisions you could make. Oh, yeah, I think I'll check Facebook right now or whatever. Okay? You're making decisions, right? All the time. And so following God's will is just decision after decision after decision after decision after decision. And oftentimes, I find that following God's will is more about recognizing the red lights than the green lights. Where are the red lights? What would clearly be against God's plan for me right now? Well, you know, perusing Facebook is not what God wants you to do right now when his word is being taught, right? Well, yeah, so then you know, okay, that's a red light. So I'll go with the green. Really, that's what it is. Making decisions and looking for the red lights to rule out what you shouldn't do so that you can, with confidence, go right through that green light. Sometimes we think, oh, man, all these, all these green lights. Well, 
they're going to turn red. Some of them are going to turn red. When they do, recognize it's a red light, stop, find a new direction. Really. God's will is just decision after decision. And so you don't sit there and say, well, let's see, what is the grand plan that God has for me? And you try to think out in the future somewhere, you know, what, what God wants for you to do. No, 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 no. God's will is this process. We're going to see this in a minute. But it's decisions, moment by moment decisions. Um, so letter B is this. God's will is a day by day process. It's a day by day process. I remember hearing an evangelist preach when I was in college and um, he got up at the pulpit and he said, young people, if you want to know God's will for your life, then brush your teeth in the morning. <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> and, and he said, you know you should brush your teeth in the morning. It's very clear. It's not, it's not something that you're unsure about. So just do it. <laughs> just brush your teeth in the morning. And you know what? You make that decision to brush your teeth in the morning, and God's going to show you the next thing. Comb your hair. Please, comb your hair in the morning, you know? <laughs> and God shows you what the next thing is, decision by decision. It's a day-by-day -day process. It's a process. It's not an end goal. It's not, you know... If, if you're playing a board game and you're playing chutes and ladders, uh, you know, our, our thought is, I just need to get to the finish line. I just need to get to that last square on the board and then I've accomplished it. But God's will is not that last square and you just got to figure out your way to get there. God's will is navigating the board step by step process by process, day by day, moment by moment. God's will is a process. It's not just a, the square at the end. It's a process. Because God has a plan and a process that he's taking you through right now. And you think, well, man, this doesn't feel very comfortable. Well, sometimes God's process, his will, is not comfortable. Don't lie to yourself thinking that God always wants you to be comfortable. That's not true. Just think what God did to his own son. That was uncomfortable. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. It was God's will that Jesus suffered and died on the cross. That's uncomfortable. And there, there is a process that we're going through in our lives. It's God's will when you're pursuing God and a relationship with Him and yielding to Him, dedicating your life to Him, your presentation, your uh, transformation, and your conformation, you, you dedicate yourself to Him in those ways. And then you just follow that process that God takes you through. And that is the will of God. It's a day-by-day -day process. It's the process, not the destination. Okay? That's the will of God for your life. It's the process. Oh, it includes a destination. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking forward to heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven. Someday I will get to heaven. But God's will for my life includes much more than just heaven someday. There is a process that I'm going through right now in my life. That's the will of God for me. So stop focusing so much on the destination and focus on the process that he's taking you through because it's moment by moment decisions. Moment by moment uh, decisions. Second Corinthians 3.18, I don't think this is in your notes, but you might want to jot this one down. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us is bringing about in us the image of God. And he does it from glory to glory. That is, he reveals the glory of God here. And you, 
and you hold on to that, and then he f- reveals another aspect of God's glory over here, and you pursue that, and you follow it there, and through this process of life, following the will of God, looking for the glory of God, looking for God's image to be produced in you by his Holy Spirit, you just go from glory to glory. Oh, there it is. There's Jesus, and there's Jesus over there. I'm going to, here, I'm following here, and oh, there's Jesus over there. I'm going to go with him over here, and from glory to glory, you look back on the steps taken you think wow God changed me from where I was and and you can look at it now in your own life and you say God has changed I'm a different person than what I was 10 years ago three years ago two years ago six months ago I'm a different man I'm a different person God's changing me from glory to glory as I've pursued him it's this process moment by moment decisions to pursue God and His glory. That's what He's doing in our lives, and that's how you discern God's direction for your life. Let her see, we wrap it up with this. Because Jesus suffered in the flesh for us, we should take upon ourselves the same mind of Christ. The same mind of Christ. You know, we look at the person of Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, and we examine his incredible sacrifice for us and what he's done on the cross for us and how he yielded to the Father's will um, and how he completely, totally dedicated himself to the Father. That same mind of Christ ought to be what we yield to as well. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And to yield to God and his plan for our lives. You know, the devil came along and tempted Jesus. The devil said to Jesus, hey, let me take you up on the top of this temple, in the highest point of the temple, and, and you just jump off. I know you're a human, Jesus, but you're also God. You're the anointed one. So I know that if you, if you just jump off, your Father in heaven's going to send angels. They're going to catch you. And, uh, and when that happens... Everybody will know that you are the Messiah. You'll have the glory that you deserve. Just do it. What a temptation for Jesus. But that wasn't God's plan for him. Now someday Jesus is coming back to this earth and there's going to be no question who he is. And everybody's going to recognize him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's going to get all that glory that the devil was tempting him with prematurely. He's going to get it all. But the plan that God had established from the will of God was different. And Jesus only knew that because he had dedicated his body to the Lord. He had dedicated his mind to the Lord. He he had uh, dedicated his his, uh, standards to the Lord as well. Allowed God to determine all those things in his life. And so he yielded to the will of the Father that's what we ought to be doing as well. Here's this last verse, 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. This is how Jesus did it. And so we're encouraged here in in these two verses to to arm ourselves with the same mind of Christ. I'm no longer going to live the rest of my time in the flesh for my own purposes, serving myself. But I will dedicate my life, my mind, my standards, everything over to God. And I will let him control it. And then he will make it very clear to me what the next step is. And moment by moment, I'll make those decisions going glory to glory. And I'll follow after the will of the Father for my life. You want to know which car to buy? Okay. Do your devotions. Pursue after Jesus Christ. Don't look for a magical verse in the Bible that tells you what kind of car you're going to get. But know Jesus 
pursue a relationship with him. And when you know him, then he'll make his will clear to you. And you'll see the red lights and you'll see, no, that car is not the one for me. But this one over here is. God will make it clear. He'll open it up for you. And you'll see his plan. So let's do that. Let's, let's discern God's direction for our lives by dedicating ourselves in these three ways to the Lord. I think we'll be amazed what we'll learn of God. And then we can have incredible confidence in our lives, taking each step, knowing I am in God's will. That's a great place to be. Father, thank you so much for showing us in Scripture how we can know your will. And I pray that you would help us to determine to pursue a relationship with you through dedicating ourselves completely to your plan and your purposes. And by that, I pray that we would have a clear direction in our lives, that we would have incredible confidence knowing that we are in your will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.